Welcome, I'm Randall Davidson. I'm the Director of Radio Services and a lecturer here in Radio TV Film at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome students, faculty, staff, and alumni to our first annual Alumni Industry Panel. It has the title Bridging College with Industry. I'd also like to extend a welcome on behalf of Troy Perkins. He's the coordinator of Radio TV Film and send along his regrets that he can't be with us here this afternoon. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce the moderator of today's panel. The last time I saw Trevi McDonald, uh, she was station manager at WRST here at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. I worked for her as her operations director. That was 20 years ago. Um, after Trevi graduated from UWO in 1990, uh, she pursued a master's degree in radio, television, and motion, motion pictures, and a doctorate in journalism and mass communications at the University of North Carolina. She owns Rayomi Global Media Group and is co-editor of Nature of Assista, Black Women's Lived Experiences in Contemporary Culture, Bridging Diverse Communities, Applications of Communications Research, and How We Got Over. She's also author of the novel Time Will Tell and received the Distinguished Alumni Award from the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh in 2008. She currently teaches courses in diversity and communication and the world of mass communication in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Please welcome Dr. Trevi McDonald. Thanks, Randall. Let's introduce our alums for today's panel. Uh, Ed Wat Walters graduated in 1985 with a major in radio, TV, film, and a minor in journalism. Ed has won numerous awards in both radio and television. Since graduating from UW Oshkosh, he has worked as a reporter and news director, web producer, and is currently the assignment manager at WFRV-TV. In 2005, he was part of the news team at WHBY that won a national Edward R. Murrow Award from the Radio and Television News Directors Association for having the best small market radio news department in the country. Ed. A 1986 graduate of the program, Dan Needles is the sports director and sports anchor for WISN Milwaukee. Since 1990, he has covered every major sports event at the local and national levels, including the Green Bay Packers' defeat by the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 32, the Wisconsin Badgers' victory in the 1999 Rose Bowl, and Marquette University's journey to the Final Four during the 2003 NCAA basketball tournament. His award-winning work at WISN 12 has included a 2000 Milwaukee Press Club Award for the Best Outside Sports Newscast for coverage of the final game at County Stadium called Thanks for the Memories, a 1999 Press Club Honor for Best Planned Coverage of 19 Forever, a story about Milwaukee Brewers Hall of Famer Robin Yount, and for Best Sports Feature by the Midwest Associated Press in 1991 for Bad Seats at the County Stadium. Gwen M. Kelly received a Bachelor of Science in Broadcast Communications in 19, 1974 and attended Illinois State University for graduate study in mass communications. She is currently pursuing a Master of Business Administration degree at Webster University. Gwen is currently the Senior Marketing Manager for Walmart Stores Incorporated, responsible for managing African American marketing initiatives for the world's largest retailer. With more than 20 years of experience, Gwen is a veteran marketing professional who injects strategic insight into the multicultural marketing process. She previously managed multicultural advertising initiatives for American Family Insurance, was associate media director for Burrell Communications Group in Chicago, where she was also responsible for media management of the Procter & Gamble and Sears accounts. Since his graduation from radio TV film in 2002, Ed Jensen has worked on many national television shows and commercials. Ed has worked on Speed Network's Pink's All Out, MTV's From G's to Gents, NBC's Fear Factor, ABC's Wipeout, and commercials for Prince Tennis featuring Maria Sharapova and Mike Golf uh, and Callaway Golf. Last year, Andy won a Best LA Local Color Emmy Award as editor of the Southern California Special Olympics for CBS in Los Angeles. Teresa Schultz, or Terry Barr, is a 1986 graduate. A UW Oshkosh Outstanding Young Alumna, Terry is an award-winning television anchor and producer who has worked for WSAW-TV, WLUK, and WISC-TV. Uh, my first question is, where did you first discover your passion for working in the media? And I guess we can start with... 
Ed. Okay, sure. Uh, you know, in school, I guess. Uh, uh, I graduated from UW Oshkosh in 1985. Uh, before that, I, I, I uh, went to school at, at UW Fox Valley. Got my associate degree there. Uh, worked at the campus radio station there, WHIM. Uh, had some internships uh, at Channel 26 and, and at WHBY Radio, where I, I eventually worked for many years. And then here, working at uh, WRST, great, great time, and that's where I fell in love with, uh, with uh, radio and, and TV. Me? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, it was here. I actually came to school here without a major. Okay. Uh, my intention was to come up and play football, and it turned out I would have been, I think, about a seventh-string defensive back. <laughs> and um, luckily, there was this great mass comm program here. And some friends were in it, and they said, why don't you try that? And by the end of my freshman year, I was done. I bought in. I think for me, it started uh, actually uh, in the town that I was raised, which was Chicago. And uh, we had two really great radio stations uh, growing up um, in Chicago. One is called WVON, one is called WBEE. Um, and these are stations that uh, specifically targeted the African-American uh, customer or consumer. And they were very active in the community. So I liked the work that they did, but I didn't know that I really liked radio. So I didn't come to uh, UWO as a um, communications major initially. I was a, a sociology major and mid-year in my sophomore year because of some of the student activities that I was engaged in, I thought, geez, I'd really like to be in the communications program here. Had a wonderful conversation with Dr. Snyder. The rest is history. Well, for me, I've kind of had a camcorder in my hand since I was a little kid. Um, uh, I'm kind of young, I guess. I feel like I just got out of here, but I was old enough that I had a camcorder that you had to attach to a VCR and carry the VCR with you to go <laughs> film your projects. <laughs> so uh, that's how I started, and uh, I just continued when I was in high school. It's all I wanted to do, and uh, it led me here. So. Same with me. I knew this is all I ever wanted to do since eighth grade. And at the time, we had to write an, um, a paper, an autobiographical type of paper that the English teacher then kept. And we got it back at graduation when our English teacher then said, what are you going to school for and where are you going? And I knew I wanted to come to Oshkosh because of the history of the program here, Radio TV Film. And uh, it's what I wrote about back in eighth grade, that that's what I wanted to do. And luckily, uh, we also had support in high school to write for a paper and to also work at a radio station right away in high school. So I came in here knowing this is it. Okay. Well, looking throughout your life, was there any one person or people who influenced your decision to pursue this field? Should I start on this end and go sure. backwards? I would just say my parents. Um, they knew I had a, a deep love of writing, especially, and so they encouraged it and traveled with me all over when looking at, at colleges and trying to decide what I wanted to do, and uh, didn't stop when I said, well, maybe I want to go out of state. But we ended up coming here totally sold, as you've heard other people say, by Doc Snyder and the program, and um, made the decision easy, and they've supported me ever since. Well, now I have to say my parents because they're sitting right there. Um, <laughs> we have a wedding this weekend in town. Um, but no, definitely my parents. My, uh, my dad's, you know, always been encouraging of, uh, you know, do what, you, do what you're good at, do what, you, do what you love, and I pursued that. And my mom, I don't think that there's a moment of my childhood that's not chronicle except my birth because she couldn't film it. So <laughs> they, they've definitely been a huge influence on me, and, and that's... That's my answer. I think I would echo the same in terms of you know, my parents and family because um, achieving you know, educational goals was very important you know, in my family. The, you know, they wanted so much for us and just encouraged us that anything that you want to do is possible. So I'd have to say my parents. Well, I'd like to say my family, but they told me I'd never make any money in it, so they said no problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> Two people especially. One was a gentleman named Dwight Poppy, worked right here yes. at UW Oshkosh in Master Control. And as I was really struggling, um, I ended one live news broadcast here. Um, thanks for watching us. For Dan Needles, I'm Lisa Branston. Uh, <laughs> and I think 
I remember that. Yeah, it was a <laughs> slight bit embarrassing, but he really pushed me to pursue it. Even after I graduated from college and didn't have a job and had a wall filled with rejection letters, he said, stick with it, and, and I did. And there was another gentleman named Eric Brown, and Terry, I don't know if you remember him from the Madison Market. He may have been gone by then. He worked at WIC. Yeah. He was here for a workshop like this in 1985. Wow. And afterwards, I had never met him before and just wanted to pick his mind a little bit. How do you get a job? I had no idea. No idea how to put a resume together. I didn't listen very well in class. And he sat with me for an hour and a half, two hours at lunch, gave me his card, said, you ever need anything? Give me a call. And I was able to use him as a reference on resumes for years. And he helped me get my first job in TV. And I, I owe a, a huge debt of gratitude to him. And I don't even know where he is now. I think he's working in Chicago. Yeah, uh, uh, family, very supportive. Uh, that's so important as you're going through school and, and trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. Uh, a lot of wonderful professors, instructors, Doc Snyder, Ben Jarman, uh, you name it. Uh, a lot of great people out there. I know that Terry mentioned her passion for radio TV film, which she discovered in eighth grade, led her to UW Oshkosh and that Doc Snyder sold her on the program. But what about the rest of you? Uh, what brought you to Oshkosh? And then what led you to uh, the AC building and the RTF major? You know, I, I, you, you, when I was uh, in school, I heard a lot of good things about UW Oshkosh. The program for radio TV film uh, had uh, uh, only good things. Uh, people had only good things to say about it. Um, but uh, also the close proximity. You know, I, I grew up in the Fox Cities, oh. and it was nice. I was still able to, to work and drive the school, and, and uh, so it worked out. It was a good deal. For me, part of my problem as a student was I never shut up, and um, that just kind of led me right into this because I could actually talk and get grades for it, not get in trouble. So. <laughs> well, for, for me, it was the fact that I knew that I wanted to go to school in Wisconsin. I, the uh, educational programs throughout, well, when I came here, so was, I'm really dating myself, it wasn't UWO. You, you, know, you had two university systems. There was a Wisconsin State University system, which uh, Oshkosh was under the Wisconsin State University system. Then it was a, and then, again, the two systems merged in the time that I was here. So, but I knew that I wanted to come to school in Wisconsin. Um, but they had a couple choices, you know, whether it was Madison or Oshkosh, but I had some friends who, who were here. And so I made the choice that at the time I was going to be a sociology major. So I switched my stream, as I said before. And again, you know, the rest is history. It was, glad. It was a good choice for me. Uh, when I was in high school, um, in about 95, my high school got an AVID, early consumer mm -hmm. version of it. And I sat behind that and I go, this, this is what I want to do. This is, I have to do this. This is, this is everything I like. Uh, so I toured a lot of schools in the state, and I just I was looking for a place that had great editing facilities and great access to equipment, you know, that I, I didn't want to go to a school where I'd have to wait till I was a senior, and then you get to check out stuff. So Oshkosh fit everything on my tour. Doug took me around early on, you know, before I was even here, and I was sold. I was definitely sold on the tour. And that's a great segue to my next question. I'd like for each of you to talk briefly about your experience in the radio TV program. How early did you get started? Did you come in from the time you declared the major or as a freshman uh, with involvement in the program? I started right away. Um, luckily, I had some experience I could bring in, and that was my first question. When with my parents, I asked Doc Snyder, how long do we have to wait? That was a problem for me looking at a lot of the other colleges. That, as you said, you have to wait till you're a junior or a senior to even get any hands-on. Sure. And um, I think I, I've worked all over the country at this point, and I would put my degree from this school up against anyone else. And in a while, we worked for since, uh, a couple of stations in Cincinnati, and I was amazed to work with people there to hear that they knew about the program here and had heard how good it is and how people come out and they're ready to go. And I think that was my biggest thing and how I perceived this program. And it's really great when you travel and you work other places and move other places that you find out that's what other people think too. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, um, I started as a freshman here, but I, I regret I didn't get more involved until later in my career here. So that's, I guess that's all I'd have to say on that is I, I should have gotten more involved earlier. 
Um, can, and for me, you know, again, having started midstream in the program, you know, because I had pretty well, I was pretty well down the path with my uh, sociolo then sociology major, which ended up being my minor, and then I had to put in a little extra time to catch up to um, to w with the uh, communications. Uh, program, but it was, it was, again, it was well worth it, but it was because of some of the activities and exposure that I had had to the program before I declared the major that convinced me that this was what, you know, I wanted to do. I was a little bit of a late bloomer, and, and I didn't do anything uh, at WRST till I was a sophomore, uh, nothing for Titan TV2 till I was a junior, and I, I wish, if I could go back, I would have started over right from the start, because like Terry said, I mean, if you go to a UW-Madison or many other programs, mm -hmm. you have no chance to get on the air and get that experience as a freshman or as a sophomore. And while I was in school, I was intimidated by some other students who, like Terry, were in it, <laughs> were in it right from the start. And they had so much experience. And they seemed so much older, even though, Terry, you're what, 10 years younger than me? At least. Um, <laughs> but they, they took advantage of that right away. And I, that's the one thing that I always try to tell the students. Even if you're a freshman, don't feel intimidated. Take advantage of that right away because that's something I wish I could have done. I was here for two years as a junior and senior. Uh, did a lot with WRST. At that time in the uh, 1980s, we had a, a CBA team here called the Wisconsin Flyers. I was able to cover the games, um, do news on WRST from the get-go. And it was just fab. I had a jazz show too. It was wonderful. Loved it. <laughs> Okay. What classes in radio, TV, film did you take that really had a major impact on your career path? Oh boy. <laughs> Work class? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I don't think there's any one particular one that, that jumps out at you. Um, it, it was just all of them combined. Uh, and, and I enjoyed the time of being able to be a student and to run a student run, help run a student run radio station. That was key. I don't remember the name of the class exactly. I think it was <coughs> Broadcast TV News, something like that, but Jerry Burke, who, I don't know, is Jerry still working in Green Bay? Jerry's retired. He's now. retired now, but he was for a long time a reporter at WBAY TV in Green Bay. And he came in and taught the class very hands-on, and he was very much, um, I don't want to say in your face, but it was reality. He taught you about the real reality out there in the world, what it's like to work out there, what deadlines are, no excuses, and that was a real wake-up call. I think any of the classes that I took, again, that fueled my passion for radio. I particularly loved the uh, opportunity that I had, the, uh, the radio workshop class that I took so that I understood what it was actually like to put a show together, to be on the air. You know, made a couple mistakes on the air there, but again, that you know, just fueled that natural passion that I had for radio. But also, I think there was also a class that I took was a, a broadcast continuity class that also, again, started to steer me a little bit more into the business side of the industry too because unless, unlike my uh, distinct uh, colleagues here on the panel, my, my career path has been more on the business side of the industry as opposed to the technical side. And those two classes I think helped steer me in that direction. There's two classes for me that really stood out. Um, Post-production with Troy Perkins, it was his first semester here. Um, I had done, you know, I thought at that stage I knew how to push a lot of buttons on the Avid. You know, I thought I knew how to do what I wanted to do, but Troy definitely got me thinking not how to edit, but why to edit, you know, so that definitely was influential on me. But I'd have to say the, the pinnacle of classes here for me was Motion Picture Workshop with Doug Heil, because it's, it's, it's the collaboration process, process in that class is real world. You know, it's, that's what you're gonna, you're gonna go, you're gonna get people in your group who you don't agree with. You're gonna get people who you argue with and you don't have the same ideas and you gotta work it out under a strict budget. So that's, that's kind of what you do when you go get a job. You know? You're not gonna agree with everybody that is on the project with you and you gotta make it work. So those are the two courses. I am your reality check today. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes. uh, five years ago I took my seventh television news job and two months ago I was laid off. We, yeah. 
We uh, have had four rounds of layoffs at what was the number one CBS station in Madison. So it's very, very disappointing. Um, but what I do have to tell you is the classes that I didn't realize at the time I was taking, I thought, what, how are these gonna play out later? Wow, am I realizing they actually matter now. The business end of it, the writing, if you get any public relations, marketing type of classes in there, all of it matters to me right now because I'm doing four freelance jobs and employing every single thing I ever learned here into all those jobs just to kind of try to uh, make money and survive in this yeah. culture of whatever our business is going into at this point. Both Dan and Ed mentioned their involvement with WRST as well as Titan TV2. But what about uh, Gwen, Andy, and Terry? What organizations in radio, TV, film were you actively involved with? I was involved in everything, and luckily I had a lot of great friends. <laughs> Dewey is here, Brian. And um, Dan and all of his roommates as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is your house standing anymore? It's part of a parking lot. I thought, I from, thought uh, it uh, might be. <laughs> Um, I was also station manager at WRST. I was the assistant news director, and I started in radio by having a classical air shift. And I knew a little bit about classical music because I'd play, I play. I'm classically trained as a pianist, but um, you know, this is when records were still the thing, and you know, you would forget to change the speed sometimes on the records, <laughs> and you would realize this just doesn't sound right, and my shift is getting done much faster than it should be. <laughs> but I never left radio or TV. I did both at the same time, and I also worked at the um, newspaper here on campus. And I feel really lucky because of the friendships. A lot of us got a chance to work together on a lot of the projects as well. I anchored um, the newscasts here my sophomore year and senior year, and I produced the music show. I don't know if you still have the music show, and then I was the talent for this week. If anybody, if you still have that show, it was like an hour, no. Oh. It, was it was an hour magazine type show, and that was a lot of fun, and I got to do that show twice. But again, I also tried to be a producer. I tried to run camera. I tried to learn everything, and, and 20 plus years later, boy, is all that coming handy. <laughs> I was involved in um, Film Society for three years. Okay. I got my project picked my last year at Oshkosh. That was a really great organization to be a part of. Um, I was also in the International Film Series. Uh, I did the marketing for that uh, my last year here. But uh, those are the two I was involved in. For me, I was involved with you know, AE World, the, you know, the Film Society, Radio TV Film Society. That was a lot of fun, but also I spent a lot of time engaged in uh, student government, which gave me, again, exposure to you know, PR, a little bit of that marketing aspect as well that's necessary to how, how do you bring the larger um, university community together engaged in, in your activities. So that's, that's what worked for me. Okay. And for those of you who were involved with WRST, how many of you got that call from Doc during your first air shift? Telling you <laughs> from the album, not off of the album, yeah. but that you're doing great. <laughs> Depended oh, yeah. if it was on the right speed or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. And uh, Gwen mentioned her involvement with uh, student government and how it just really gave her a very broad base or an opportunity to uh, hone her communication skills across the board. Uh, what campus activities were the rest of you involved with outside of radio, TV, film program? You know, uh, for me, I, I worked a lot, you know, and I, I, I was one of these uh, students who commuted. So I did not live on campus. Uh, I commuted uh, every day, uh, but uh, um, I, I spent a lot of time at RST. You know, that was my home away from home. Like Terry, I wrote for the newspaper briefly, real briefly. Um, <laughs> Things that we could talk about. <laughs> I'm trying to. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed the college experience. I wasn't. Um, I, I think I was on the senior class committee. That was about okay. it. But for the most part, lots of radio and television workshop. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about you know the uh, activities on campus that I was involved with, and I see the importance of them as I um, as I traveled this. Uh, 
career that I've had. Um, I think in the end of my sophomore year, beginning of my junior year, I was asked to lead or to be the chair of what was then called the Speaker Series. So had responsibility for bringing some of the major speakers on campus. And what was important about that was learning to be engaged with celebrity, if you will, and um, in business as well, too. And that was, that was really important to me at a very young age. Having an opportunity to interface with celebrity was uh, very beneficial as I've made my way through an advertising agency uh, career. The other activity that I was really engaged in was um, my senior year. I was president of OSA. I don't know if it's still called the Doshkosh Student Association, but it's student government. And that really fueled my passion for you know, being engaged in the community work, um, some social justice issues as well, too. And again, that has also showed up in different activities that I've been engaged in a professional, particularly with my current work that I do. Uh, intramural basketball. <laughs> I was in the film department a lot, I don't, and I had fun like Dan a little bit, too, but that's about it. I had a lot of fun, too. I was a, Wayne, you're not going to I was a basketball cheerleader my first year here. <laughs> but then I was on the Taylor, I lived in Taylor Hall, and I was uh, the secretary of Taylor Hall government my sophomore year, and then I started getting internships after that, so spent a lot of time here and then off campus, um, both at WBAY when they were in Oshkosh and then also at uh, some radio stations in town. Okay. Well, how did your minor or classes that you took outside of the radio TV film program influence your career path? I have a journalism minor and a political science minor. Oh. And I think with radio, TV, film, it just really all goes together because you do cover um, elections. You right. need to know how to write really fast and, and all the different styles of writing. And um, again, I think coming back to where I am right now, wow, it does make a lot of sense that it brings it all together. Uh, my, my minor was English, creative writing. Um, it's coming to play a little bit, I guess. I've, on two of the jobs I've, I've done as an editor, I've also been asked to be a story producer. So I have to write, write stuff that goes on the air. So I think it comes into play there. But that's, that's all. <laughs> okay. Sociology major, dealing with people, dealing with differences. It's been very important to have that and how to come together in terms of building organizational, organization, being part of an organization, being, leading organizational leadership. It's been very important. Okay. Uh, I had a journalism minor also, and I was, I think, three credits away from a phi ed minor and about four credits away from a history minor. I was here a while. I accumulated a lot of, a lot of credits. Uh, the history stuff has really come in. Um, in television news, we work in history every day, and it's really important to know what has gone on in the world that was there before you, because you're not the center of it. And luckily for me, I work in Milwaukee, where I grew up. So being in Wisconsin, studying history here, that really has come into play because we work in sports, but we also work in news. Um, the Phi Ed had nothing to do with it. I took jogging and golf and bowling and whatever. So I don't know if that ever helped. <laughs> Kept in shape. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Uh, mine, uh, minor was in journalism. Learned how to interview people, how to listen to them, and how to tell the story. You know, that was really important, and uh, um, yeah, it helped a lot. Okay. Is there something you wish you would have taken or learned in college? Oh, boy, I think if I, if I had the time, more business courses, economic type courses, political science type courses, uh, uh, the law, you know, learning how to cover court cases, a lot of them. <laughs> There's only so much time in the day. But uh, uh, it, it, would, it, it would have helped, I think, to have even more of a, of a, of a background in many different uh, disciplines. My two biggest regrets for that would have been I never had a shift as a DJ at WRST. I just wanted to be in sports and news. So my first job that I got was at a radio station in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, a mono FM station, oh, wow. where I was DJ Yay. and news and sports and everything else and farm reports and it would have been nice to have had that experience especially because we had polka hour twice a day <laughs> because the polkas the farmers have uh, I guess they've done some kind of surveys that 
cows give more milk listening to polka music because <laughs> those that are doing the milking start getting into the beat. But having to queue up on free turntables polka albums that last two minutes, it's tough. So I really wish I would add that experience. But the other thing, and um, I really stress this, and I know many of you did that, was have an internship. I never did. And I did not get a job out of college for 11 months. And part of that was not having an internship because I lost out to people that had the same level of experience with, as I did, except they had an internship. And a lot of times, I mean, there are different kinds of internships. When I worked in television in Wausau, we put our interns on the air. Here you go, kid, do a packet. Where I am now, basically, they're there to help us out. They don't get on the air, but it's having that experience, seeing what goes on, and having it on your resume. So who knows what would have happened. I think for me, it w probably if I had more business courses, knowing, now knowing, you know, to, you know, hindsight, now knowing that I chose a different path and I came up through, you know, the advertising agency um, path, if you will, and how important understanding your client's business. So if I had had more of a business background, had taken more classes in business, I think I could have been even more successful. Not that I don't, you know, I appreciate all the opportunity that I had. I think I did okay with some of the accounts that I was able to work on. But if I had had more of that business background, some of those courses and the courses, I think it would have helped a lot more and I wouldn't have been learning on the fly. I was a film snob in college and I kind of <laughs> took every film course and theory course and production course available and took the little, the, just the intro courses for television and, and radio and that was dumb, don't do that. Because uh, I've been in TV for the last five years <clears throat> and on your first job you don't, Bill Kirkhoff's gonna win so he hears this, but you, you don't wanna Google like what's the difference between a composite and component wire, you know, from not taking you know, television courses. I, I didn't remember it from fundies. So uh, <laughs> try to take as many courses as you can from, from all three of, of the uh, uh, radio, television, and film. And you never know when it will come into play. So. <laughs> and I agree with Ed, too. Law classes. Mm -hmm. Boy, it's, it's strange how you end up on, on some stories and you're thinking, oh, good grief. I wish I knew how this worked. Living in different states, I've found every state is a little bit different too, according to how they, they act and how the government works. I don't know if you have these classes, but these would be good to add at some point. Um, dealing with contracts as talent and unions. And I don't know if that's something that's ever discussed, but it, it's something that we can definitely talk about later if you'd like to. Okay. Uh, Dan mentioned the importance of doing internships. What are some of the internships that helped you all get to where you are today? I, I had quite a few internships <laughs> and luckily I turned quite a few of these into paying jobs while I was still in college. Hmm. And I, I grew up in a smaller town outside of Green Bay and there was a small radio station there that anytime I came home they said just come on in and you can work. So I had wonderful, wonderful opportunities, but you had to show up too. So that's a big thing, just grabbing these opportunities and making them whatever you can. And Dan said too, you know, just knowing that's who you're competing against is having these on air, um, not on air, just whatever you can do to get your foot in the door and get that experience to put on your resume. They look at that and they'll compare you to a maybe a UW-Madison or a UW-Eau Claire student that doesn't get that hands-on. We're here, okay, you've done it in school, that's awesome, but what else have you done outside of school? And internships are incredible. So I, I worked everywhere that I could. Uh, I did not have an internship. Um, between years four and five at Oshkosh, I went to a AVID school, though, out in yeah. Portland, Oregon, for six weeks. It was really a, a great experience. We worked with... Um, uh, independent filmmakers would bring their film in and we give they, the school would give them free post production on it so it was beneficial to them and good for the students you'd work with these guys and um, it was just a, it was a really good experience be, and I have to say like what I learned at Oshkosh I was ahead of the game there actually so it, it gave me confidence that I could I could maybe go go out to Los Angeles and and compete you know it definitely gave me that kind of confidence um, my wife Angela Parker who's a, a graduate as well she went to uh, 
she did an internship at Spyglass Entertainment uh, in LA. And <coughs> she said it was a really great experience. So I think any kind of uh, real world kind of experience you can, you can get into like that, it's, it's always good. Back in the ancient times, <laughs> you know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have a formal internship as I was looking for that first opportunity or did any internships while I was here at, at, um, here at Oshkosh. But what I did do when I, when I uh, came out of grad school, and even, even, even in between um, um, leaving here and going to grad school, I made a point of identifying people who were doing what I wanted to do or what I thought I wanted to do. And I was very bold and, you know, if I, you know, people in Chicago who were, you know, at, you know, major television stations, radio stations there in Chicago, I made a point of, you know, calling them, writing them, and just asking them, would you spend some time with me and tell me about your work? So that kind of, you know, that helped to get, you know, exposure for me as to what are these people doing and what do I think I want to do? And then also getting my name out there, if you will, as someone when there was an opportunity and actually my first opportunity occurred that way. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I had a couple of internships. Uh, I worked, uh, had a job at a Green Bay television station where they had a show on Saturdays called Strikes and Spares for Cash. <laughs> and I worked the camera crew on that, so that was uh, some early work on that. Uh, but I also interned at WHBY Radio in Appleton where I eventually worked there for 18 years. And I uh, got my foot in the door, uh, uh, did everything in, in the newsroom there, and, and uh, that's the key. It's, 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 some of it also is, is who you get to know, get your name out there. That's very important to, to uh, to have that communication with people in the industry. Um, and it helps you get the, your foot in the door when you graduate to try to get your, your first job. Okay. How do you recommend pursuing an internship? Should students stay in Wisconsin or shoot for larger markets like uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, or New York? Um, well, you know, for, for me it was important to find something close to home where, you know, where I could still, uh, you know, um, work. You know, my, job that I needed to work to make it through school and uh, and then to have that internship uh, and then pursue I, I think it was important for me to to uh, uh, try to, to know to uh, uh, put the word out there that hey you know, I'm looking for something you know at all the television radio stations is there something that uh, uh, that's available and uh, that's what I did if school was free then I would say go wherever you want for an internship but considering it costs a little bit of money I think anybody who offers internships understands, um, number one, most internships don't pay. So number two, you need to do it as close to, if it's during the school year, somewhere near school. So if you're here, if you can get an internship in Green Bay, you have a way to get up there, fantastic. Um, during the summer, if you're closer to home, wherever you are, if you can get an internship there, great. I would think it's easier to get an internship during the school year. Um, in the summertime, last summer, we had interns from Syracuse University, Carroll University in Waukesha, and um, I think Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Oh, okay. During the school year, we almost always have uh, UW-Milwaukee and Marquette University because it's right there. I would think it, the, the smaller the market, the better for you to get an internship because you get more hands-on. You, I, I'm not sure what you get to do with Green Bay, but you might get to pick up a camera. You might get to do editing. You might get the chance to help produce a show. Anything you can get your hands on, that's the best internship. People don't look at your resume someday and say, oh, you had an internship in L.A. Oh, you had one in Green Bay? We'll choose L.A. No. <laughs> it might be the opposite direction because they know you had more hands on mm -hmm. at the smaller market. And I think that I agree with with that too, and I also believe that it's also become a little bit more creative in terms of internships, a little bit broader as to uh, internship opportunities. I know there are opportunities that are online, you know, in terms of that are offered online. So some of the major like syndicated television shows, um, and, and even some of the movie studios. I lived in LA for 10 years, so I'm very biased towards LA because I call LA my adult home. But also too, when I first started out, I was offered an internship in, um, in Oregon. And I turned it down because it was too far from, I, I, I thought of it as 
too far from home. And it was at a radio station, small radio station um, there in Oregon. And sometimes I wonder what would have happened had I, you know, had the audacity and the courage to have taken that um, that opportunity. So I guess the you know the story there is is not always about L.A. or Chicago or New York. Look for opportunities that are going to give you the broadest experience. Because I agree that the more opportunity that you have to do different things is going to put you ahead above the competition. Yeah, I can't tell you how to get an internship. I did not do one. But if, you, if you're in the boat of, you know, I don't know if LA is right for me. I don't know if I want to move to, to New York. Or if you're in the, uh, you know, I'm thinking about giving it a year or something. Maybe you should pursue an internship at that stage where you're not committed. You don't have an apartment where you have to pay rent. You know, maybe you can stay on somebody's couch who's an alumni or something. And, and just try to network and, 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 and try to, you know, find out who's out there. Discover how difficult it is, it is going to be, like a grind for you, or does it come real easy to you? And, you know, maybe at that stage you should, you know, pursue it at that stage before you're invested. Okay. I think if you want an internship, just ask. Go for it. Go after it. Let them know you're interested and that you have this experience from UW Oshkosh if you don't have any other internship experience, but just pile it on. Pile it on until somebody can't stand it anymore and they say, okay, okay, come and work with us. Let us see what you can do. Um, there was a summer I, I also, like Dan, all of his roommates, I think most of your roommates were radio TV film majors. And yeah, sort of. So. <laughs> Mine were too. And one summer, the three of us were all going to go to New York and try to get an internship out there. And only one of the three of us ended up going because we, the other two of us got pretty decent um, paying jobs plus internships in the area. So we stayed and that was totally great because it was wonderful hands-on experience. Our friend who did go to New York, and now this was in a new situation, poured coffee. And you know, we had always heard that that was the bad thing if you end up in a newsroom because of unions and the things that um, you don't get to talk a lot about, but that is what happened to her. And she came back and said, I, I should have thought about it further. I should have known that I wouldn't get hands-on. She said, I got to watch a lot. And I don't know if that's really what we're all about. What work should students do during their college career to help prepare them for the future? I think everything we've been talking about, hands-on, hands-on, as much as you can do until you figure out exactly what you want to do. But then again, as I'm learning now, don't rule anything out. Don't just be TV. Don't just be film. Don't just be radio. Because somewhere down the road, one of those could save your life and your career. Exactly. Um... And if you're a freshman or sophomore in this room, like, your time's, like, now. Like, get, get going now. Mm -hmm. Because, especially if you want to do, so, if you want to, like, if you want to direct, if anybody wants to direct, like, get, get started early. Because, you know, by the time you get to your, you know, if you're involved in all these organizations, if you're in film society as a freshman or sophomore, by the time you're a junior, senior, then you're running the show, you know, and, and you can apply that. Because when you go to Los Angeles, New York, you're just not going to land at, directing job, you know, right out of school. So you have to learn to do a lot of different things along the way. And this is, a good, this is a good place to do it right here, right now. You have all the tools available. You have team, you know, pro team projects available. And it's a good time to get involved right now. Be open to each and every opportunity. Don't forget the importance of networking. Diversify. Learn to embrace that which you hate. <laughs> yes. Um, for instance, if you want to be a play-by-play -play announcer, you don't like soccer, you don't like hockey, you don't understand them, you've never played them, understand it, because the first job you will get doing play-by-play -play will be soccer or hockey. Um, if you want to be in front of a camera, learn how to work a camera, because if you're going into television news, your first job, you will one-man band it. You will, you will be wearing a suit. You will get grease and dirt all over your nice clothes because you're shooting as well as reporting. So you'll have to set the camera up on a tripod and hope you're standing in front of it in the right place. Or like I did once covering a, the Senior Bowl down in Mobile, Alabama, one-man banding it, trying to do a stand-up where the screen is like this and my head was down here. <laughs> you'll make those mistakes, but you'll have to do it. Um, learn about the web, learn how to blog, 
how to post stories on the web. Things that we never had to deal with, now all of a sudden are popping up in our careers. They don't train you, or they didn't train us in college for blogging, for working on the web. This business will change by the time you become our age. It will change all over again, and everything you learn <laughs> will be out the window, and there's a whole new medium that you'll have to, new, you'll have to know. Um, I know when Terry and I were here at school, computer classes meant those punch cards with large computers. <laughs> we didn't have personal computers. And all of us, as adults, after school, have had to learn how to use computers. And it, to your generation, that seems really easy, because you grew up with that. For our generation, it's not so easy. And you will probably have something like that happen to you in your career, where you will have to learn something brand new to embrace it and learn how to do that. You got to have the mentality of being a go-getter. You got to want to do as much as you can, learn as much as you can, get as many experiences, uh, internships, uh, you know, uh, learn how to work the web. Like you know, like uh, Dan said, uh, you got to have that mentality to, in order to make yourself more marketable when you actually graduate and want to get a job in radio, TV, film, or what have you. Yes. Uh, Dan talked a lot about having computer skills, social media skills. What are some of the other uh, skills or characteristics students need to develop in college in order to succeed in this industry? Writing. That's one thing that I've noticed. It's, it's kind of like a dying art. Um, writing is so important. Uh, to, you have to learn how to tell a story. You have to learn how to listen, how to uh, interview a person, um, you know, if you're a journalist. Uh, but you got to learn how to write. You have to learn how, to, how people talk. And uh, I think it's a lost art. And I, I, I think uh, younger people need to, to uh, emphasize that. Uh, writing is so important. Ed's exactly right. And it's not necessarily just for a, a career in radio or television, in PR. If you have to write a press release, the, the art of writing a sentence it's long out of my head. If you work in television news long enough, everything is dot, 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 sentences shortened, no sentence structure, because you're writing um, for a certain style. It's completely different than if you're writing for a newspaper or if you're putting together a press release. And it's really important to have those writing skills, but also listening, too. Like Ed said, if, if the ability, if you're interviewing somebody, you cannot go in there with a notebook full of questions and then go to the next question. You have to listen, hear what they say, and whether you're interviewing somebody for a job or interviewing somebody for a story, you really have to be a good listener. They just said what I would, what I would say to, as well too, because again, coming up on the, through an ad agency environment, knowing how to write was very important. Knowing how to tell a story has been very important. And combining that with the new environment that we are in now, for, ex for example, in my current work, it is so important because we do a lot of presentations, but we do them with PowerPoint. So we're doing it both with words and with pictures and understanding how to tell the story and how to convincingly get your point across. It's been so important. So knowing right, basic writing skills, knowing how to tell a story, and how to put the visuals together, extremely important. I think collaboration is really important here. Um, getting involved on projects, films, on the radio, TV shows. You know, you get the X's and O's and the, you know, out of a manual or textbook if you wanted to, in post-production, if you want to learn how to use Avid, Media Composer, or Final Cut Pro, but you're not going to learn, you know, how to deal with people and, and projects and stuff like that. But I also wanted to say something what, what Ed said um, about learning, you know, different, different programs makes you more marketable. Um, I've, I've got denied a few jobs because I wasn't proficient in After Effects. And I believe you have that at the school here. Um, you know, so more programs, a lot of jobs I take, I have to have Photoshop skills. You know, once you learn one of these programs, if, you, if you're into compositing, you want to do like, you know, Shake and Maya, or you learn Motion, those are skills you put on your resume and that makes you so much more marketable. Like, that, that person can, you can do that? Okay, great. That, that gives you a leg up on, in the job market, for sure. And you have a lot of tools here that you could learn some of these programs before you get out of here. So, Mine would be finding a story. 
And you know, we always joke that everybody has a story, but it's true. Uh, my husband is a news photographer, and he laughs because um, when I was still working with him, I would just listen to people and say, oh my gosh, do you hear that? That's a story. And I worked for a news director who at one point, uh, the requirement was every day, every reporter and anchor had to bring in four story ideas. And you better not just have it as, oh, here's my idea. You better have it developed, and you better be able to, if they go, that's a great story, go do it. One of those four stories would be your story, so you better know enough about, oh my gosh, how am I gonna have this story done for maybe the five o'clock news, the six o'clock, the 10 o'clock, the 11 o'clock, whatever the case may be. So don't rule anything out as far as what may make a really great story. What was your first job after college and did you take whatever job you could get or did you wait specifically for the job um, yeah. for you? Um, my first job out of college was at um, WIXX radio up in Green Bay, WGEE. It used to be, I don't even know what, the, what it's called now. Um, I, ha I, I grew up on a dairy farm, so I had a farm background. So I was doing farm news, I was writing and helping produce commercials, and then I was filling in for, their, for the WBAY noon show um, whenever their farm director, Mike Austin, who's now at Channel 5 in Green Bay, whenever he had one of his chicken dinners to go to, I would get to <laughs> fill in for him on the farm news because they said, oh, you kind of know what all these numbers mean. And luckily, I took that, I felt kind of silly, and at least if I had questions, I could call my dad and say, I don't know what any of this means. What, what am I talking about? But in six months' time, it turned into the job that I ended up in in news, my first real, I would call it, TV job at Channel 7 in Wausau, and that was a news job then. But I was pretty lucky because I did get that right away and had had kind of that hounding experience, as I talked about, to get that first job right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first job was at Barnes & Noble. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't do what I did either. We went to LA and we knew a few people out there uh, seven years ago and I thought I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold out until I get that you know, entry level industry job. Well, it was two months into, the, into living there and it's expensive. <laughs> it's not cheap. Uh, so both of us looking for jobs was not smart. So my advice is Everybody that moves out to LA that talks to me, I tell them, go get a job immediately that you can walk away from. You know, go, go be a server, go you know, work at a video store. And just being able to pay bills and not have that worry, in addition to looking for work, is so key to like, if, if you make a move to a big city that's out of state, I, you know, have some stability. Well, my first job is a little bit of a cautionary tale. Mm -hmm. So um, I had um, very much wanted to you know, get in the industry. I'm from Chicago, so I thought, hey, I'm good enough for Chicago, major market. I don't have to go to a small market. So I had spent the summer talking to a whole lot of people who were doing what I thought I wanted to do. And actually, I took a page from Stud Turkle's book, Working because I realized that people love talking about what they, what they did and how they did it. So at the end of the summer, I still had, no one had, you know, at the CBS, ABC, NBC, WGN, had said, you know, Gwen, come work for us, but I had made a lot of contacts. And I decided that I was gonna take a position at an ad agency, look in the ad agency world, and that would just be a stopgap until I found that perfect television. I was either television or radio because I wanted to produce. So I um, had a conversation with a woman. Unbeknownst to me, she is the president of the Women's Ad Club in Chicago. And she says, I'm going to find you a position. I said, OK. I had heard that all summer. So I get a call like three weeks later. And uh, Rosemary had found me a position at a film production house in Chicago. And this film production house is, uh, was famous for doing interiors for uh, television commercials, but as well for a television show called, uh, uh, sponsored by Mutual of Omaha called Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins, mm. if you remember. Well, the owner of the uh, film production house, a gentleman by the name of Fred Niles, had a media buying service. 
So it was that, it really turned out to be that stopgap in terms of working in an advertising, envir advertising agency environment because I was buying media for uh, products like Coca-Cola and High C and placing it on radio, buying co you know, commercial time on radio stations across the, uh, across the U.S. as well as Canada. Three months into that gig, I'm like, it was great, but I, I thought bigger for myself. And they asked me to stay, but I said, no, I'm going to, you know, I'm on my way either to L.A. or New York. Well, had I stayed, it is the company that became Harpo. Oh. And I think about, and I think oftentimes had I stayed wow. with the company, I could have had all of those opportunities that Ms. Winfrey has had. <laughs> That's a lot of money. But, yeah. <laughs> the cautionary tale. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned earlier my first job, a little bit about it, at this radio station where one of the first days on the air I had to stay after work as the owner's wife made me pronounce the station call letters 50 times because I was saying WCFW. And she stood there, it's WCFW. And I had to do that 50 times like I'm in second grade. <laughs> Um, I also had to sign a paper that promised that I would never eat hot food inside the station because apparently there were rats running around underneath the station. If they smelled the hot food, they would chew through the wires and knock the station off the air. True story. So I'd sit in my car in the middle of winter eating Hardee's, okay? Um, I was going to hold out for a TV job at Green Bay, Madison, or Milwaukee. They'll come find me. Eleven months later, I would have taken a job anywhere, and I did take a job um, as a, uh, like a tour guide at a, a place in Oconomowoc. Had nothing to do with my major. I needed a job. Um, and I was offered this job. I took the first job that was offered to me. And at the end of the interview, I finally said, how much does it pay? And they said, four fifty. I said, you mean an hour? And they said, no, a month. <laughs> So 450 bucks a month is not a lot to live off. That's 20 some years ago. I don't know what that would be now, but your entry level jobs are not always going to be super high paying. And um, it, was, it was a nightmare. I learned a lot. We, we played uh, a actual records back then. And they all had cue burn, so it would be at the start of every song because they were queued up and played so many times. There were albums where we could only play certain songs and the owner would take a key and X out songs he did not want you to play. <laughs> it, it was nuts, but it was a job and it was an experience that I'll never forget, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Andy's right, uh, you do need to uh, be able to eat and, and, and live. So it took me like six, seven months before I found my first radio job. And uh, so I was working at some gas station until I was able to get in the door at KFIZ. I was there one year and I was let go. And then here's where my internship came in. Um, I had interned in 1983 at WHPY. So they knew about me, knew what I can do, what my skill level was. And uh, then they had an opening for a part-time uh, news reporter position. And so I was able to, to get into there. And that was uh, back in uh, 1987. Uh, worked part-time for a year and then I got a full-time gig. And then I, I eventually became the news director in 1997. Uh, and then I was let go after 18 years from HPY. And then uh, my contacts, because we had close relationship with uh, Channel 5. Uh, so. Uh, I was able to get in the door there, and the only position they had open at the time was a web producer position. So I had to learn how to, uh, to uh, work the web. Some, I did not have any of those skills, so that was a learning experience. And then the assignment uh, uh, manager position opened up in 2006, and, and that's when I uh, got in, in the door there. So uh, internships, very important. Uh, you have to work your way up, you know. You, you can't get your ideal job the minute you graduate. You have to have those experiences with the rats and everything and, and eventually work your way up. In terms of the job search, how much of it is the, the resume or how you look on paper and or your interview personality? You know, your resume gets you in the door. I mean, uh, 
you've got it has to be well written. You have to have your experience on the top, and that's you know key. You know your internships. You have to mention those. Resume gets you in the door, and then uh, then that personality. You have to be ready for it, and you have to sell yourself. You have to say. You know, these are the skills I have, and this is what I can do for you. This is what I can do for your corporation to help make it better. Uh, so, yeah, resume, very important. The great thing about television news is you have the added dimension of a take. Um, it's not just your resume. It's not just your interview. It's your tape. And, for instance, the first job that I got in television was in Wausau, like Terry, in 1987. And the news director called me up. He said, we're going to have you up here. We're probably going to offer the job to somebody else, but why don't you come up for the interview? <laughs> Lots of confidence going up for that one. But I felt like I had nothing to lose. And as it turned out, after the interview, we sat in an edit bay, and, and he watched my tape. And the stuff on my tape was from UW Oshkosh. And I had done a story uh, on a former coach here named Eric Kitzman. And it turns out the general manager of the TV station, a gentleman named Lauren Jorstead, went to UW Oshka. And he happened to be walking by the edit bay just when Eric Kitzman's interview was up. It turned out Eric Kitzman was his coach in college. And we talked a little bit. I guess after the interview got done, the GM went to the news director and said, why don't you hire the Oshkosh kid? <laughs> you know, I wasn't more talented, more ready. I, I really doubt that any sparkling personality came out of the interview. It was kind of, yeah, no, yeah. Um, and, I, and I had an afro that was like this massive at the time. You know. it, a lot of times it's little things like that, that that you will find. There might be a name on your resume that somebody will recognize. There might be somebody on a the tape. There might be somebody you went to school with. The second job that I got in, in broadcasting, my roommate in college here called me one night and said, hey, I think our sports guy is going to quit in the next couple of weeks. Why don't you send me a tape? The guy quit the next day, my tape was in there first, I got the job. Um, the job that I got in Milwaukee, I jumped from Wausau to Milwaukee. And at that time, nobody did that because they wanted you to go to Green Bay, Madison, get more experience. Again, I was talking to somebody the day the job opened up. Right place, right time. That's another place where an internship comes in. Knowing those people, connecting. Um, and then you're oftentimes in the right place at the right time because you might talk to one of your old chums from school when you find out about a job opening up. And it's not just television or radio or anything. It, it's any job. Mm -hmm. And you really have to market yourself. I agree with everything that Dan has said. I think it's the networking that happened that is so important. But other, uh, other aspect that I would add, too, is that, yes, the resume gets you in the door, but also when you're sitting there in that interview, when you can also demonstrate and show what you know about that particular company and what yes. challenges they may be facing at that particular time. And even if you guess at what a possible solution may be, share that with them so you, so you show ingenuity and you show that you are imaginative and that you are innovative. Because a lot of people like me who are sitting behind the desk and may have to fill an entry level position, we're looking for that individual who has creativity and innovation. You show that through your interview, we'll get you. Well, I think you going to UW Oshkosh helps. It helped me. I, the first two jobs I got in the industry were just handed to me, no interview, no resume. Mm -hmm. And there's a growing contingent of people in Los Angeles that can they, basically, how I get jobs is kind of strange. I change jobs every four months usually. You know, show ends, you've got to go find a new job. So uh, it's all about finding who's hiring. And somebody, one job leads to another, leads to another. It's, it's just how it works in LA. And it's about being able to be vouched for, kind of. That, you know, there's, there's not time. If you, if you go to a show and they need an editor and you know, air date's coming up, they only have a week to edit. You, know, you want somebody coming in there who's just going to be able to get the job done like that, and not somebody that, oh, let's see how they work out. So, who have you worked with? It, call all the people that. So, I stay in touch on Facebook chat. You know, not to market Facebook anymore, but I, I use it all the time for jobs. Like, it's it's a lot easier than cold calling people when I have somebody on my Facebook to say, "Hey, you guys, do you need anyone?" You know, it's a lot, it's a lot easier than having to pick up the telephone. Um, so, stay in touch with everybody, and 
not that the, not that the resume is not important. You know, you have to do the work still, but. It. I've gotten two of my freelance opportunities through Facebook, and Facebook is a pretty new thing to me, <laughs> so I'm having some fun <laughs> with that. Um, I'm coming from the aspect of, I thought I was going to be the next Diane Sawyer when I left Oshkosh. So when I got to Green Bay and I was the main anchor at Fox 11, I got an agent. Boy, that did not go well. They got me my next job, sure they did, but they did not get me the huge salary raise I thought I would get, and they took 10% of my salary off the top. So I'm not gonna say anything against agents because they have their place, they can be helpful, um, depending upon what your career path is and what you need to do with them. But I got my own interviews in Chicago, New York, and LA after I fired that agent because they were not looking out for my best interests. And I found whether it's a small market or a big market, you call up that news director, find out some common person or play or anything you can find, they'll take 10 minutes to meet with you. And in doing that in New York, it did lead to um, a job offer. So I could be a reporter for WCBS right now in New York, but my husband and I chose to go backwards and go to a smaller market because it's really where our heart was. We weren't into that big pace thing anymore and I think we were really burned out on chasing a lot of the really bad news. But um, I think that's a, a big part of you get kind of ployed into some of those big things where you think you might need an agent to help you get in the door and you just, you really don't. And Terry, my next question is actually directly for you. What advice can you give students who are interested in on-air um, opportunities, particularly as it pertains to contracts, yeah. to unions? I know I interned at WGN, and that's very much a union shop. Right, and, and unions are different in, in every situation. There are some stations that don't have unions. So you can do every and any job. And then I've worked at some stations where you dare not push a button. Um, one of the stations, we were still on tape. So you put the tape in, no, no. You hand the tape to the engineer, they then put it in and play it. It, it gets so hinky with so many lines in between, and you can easily have a grievance filed against you if you cross the line of someone else's position. Um, I've also worked in a, in a shop where I was part of the union, and that was a, a very interesting, different aspect of it because for the first time ever, I got overtime pay. So if you were working those 12 hour days like we do a lot, oh my gosh, I actually got paid for every hour of 12 hours. Mm. And they had rules, yeah. <laughs> they had rules where you couldn't be called immediately back in even if you just got home. Um, so it was interesting to come from both of those aspects. So if you ever get any type of contract, whether it is from a union, from a talent agent, or for your own first job, if you're on air or now a lot of producers have talent contracts, read every single word because that business wants to own you. They don't want you to ever leave them unless you are no longer good for them. These contracts are written so much in their favor that you have to be really careful. And a lot of us in varying aspects have gotten together and sought attorney's help and actually being able to read through some of the fine print of these contracts. So, and, and the other biggest thing I think I wanna to say too when it comes to that, your first job, you feel like you gotta take what they're giving you. It is still a negotiation. You can still say, you know what, this is a fair back and forth balance. You're offering me this, but maybe I need to make a little bit of this. And somewhere in the middle, you might be able to work it out. If you don't feel sure enough about doing that for your first job, that's okay. I didn't either. I took what I could get, and I'm sure they still laugh about it. But in later years, it can become kind of fun to say, you know what, I'm doing all of these things, and I really do think this is what I'm worth. You're not going to pay me this $10,000 a year. I, get, I, I need a little bit more than that. So don't be afraid to negotiate, because what you have done and what you are going through and what you have to offer is worth a lot more than they'll probably ever give you, unfortunately. Thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. Andy, you're a 2002 graduate and you're quite accomplished. How have you been able to get so far in such a short amount of time? And did you find it difficult to compete with students from, with degrees from more prestigious institutions? Um, maybe the kids from like 
AFI, UCLA, USC have, you know, more connections because they're right there in Los Angeles. But in terms of getting a job, UW Oshkosh has always helped me and not, not hurt me in any case. There's a lot of people out in LA. I don't know if everybody knows, but it's growing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that do a lot of different things. So if you're a writer, if you're into producing, there's people, and if you're into camera, there's people that do all those different things, those little niches now, so. Um, but in terms of how I, I got going, uh, it's, first it's, you kind of make your own luck. I mean, you have to get some breaks, but you kind of make your own luck. I was, but I just wanted to say how, how one job really leads to another in LA, um, in terms of post-production at least. I was carrying boxes in from Fear Factor as the post PA, as the show is winding down and, you know, a little down about, you know, I'm probably gonna have to go to another show as a post PA and drive around tapes around LA in the middle of the night. And, you know, I just want to be an assistant editor and stopped and I was talking to a guy who was smoking a cigarette outside and I commented on his shirt. If I went to stop and did that, I wouldn't have gotten an Emmy. Like mm -hmm. every single job from that conversation mm -hmm. led, he gave me a job and that led to the next job and that led to the next job. All from that. So you got to make your own luck, but it's also it's also a lot of hard work. Once you get in, um, I, I always tell people who are starting out as like assistant editors to, you know, take notes. I take notes. I take insane notes. Like producers, I sit for screenings. I take incredible notes every just so I cover everything, and they they kind of leave you alone. Then you know they trust you. It's all about that trust factor. Um, be persistent, ask questions, don't feel like there's, there's stupid questions, you know. Um, be willing to put in long hours in reality TV where we're not talking unions and bonus pay on the weekend. Uh, yeah, if there's a, a cut that's got to go out on Monday and it's not done on Friday, you're working the weekend, you know, and that's, that's just the way it is. Um, I, always told, I always tell Doug he should offer a class on... Uh, just practical things, like a test on knowing the Starbucks menu. If you, <laughs> I'm serious, like know how to transfer calls on a phone, you know how to fill out a FedEx form, it will get you places faster. <laughs> they, if you wanna be, I always, I wanted to be an assistant editor, but if, if I was a PA and I didn't know how to do those things, they won't move you up because if you can't fill out a FedEx form, how am I going to trust you with a show? You know, so it's it's it works like that. If you screw up a coffee order, well, you know, let's go with the next guy. <laughs> That's just how it is. Um, I, th there was three things of advice told to me. I just wanted to pass on real quick. Um, one of them is it, they, they've all come into play in my in my career so far. One of them is whatever project you're working on, find a way to make it yours, kind of. You know, as, as little. Um, as little as you can, you know, um, to have a positive enthusiasm about what you're working on is really important. I've worked with editors who've complained about the show, and word gets around real quick, and there's, people get fired, you know, so whatever you're doing, if you, if you hate it that much, quit. If not, then, then you know, do the job and, and, and don't complain about the show that you're on or the project you're working on or whatever. Um, the other one is, uh, if you're, if you're going into post-production editing, I was told by a mentor at the Avid camp I went to, it was, uh, he said, an editor is a solver of problems, creator of none. So you, get, you go onto a show, you need to be the guy who's fixing things and working problems out and working between production and editing and the director and the producers. Don't be the drama queen that's, that's creating a lot, of, a lot of issues in the edit room. Uh, and that's come in, I mean, I've worked with a lot of drama queens, so. Uh, and the last thing is always have a backup plan if you're going into this industry, I think. Like, always be thinking about if, if this, if, at least in a changing job, LA, New York kind of market, thinking about the next job while you have your job right now, always. Uh, be, don't stop networking with people at any time. You know, always find, always find out what people are doing. So, I guess that's all I have. <laughs> Gwen, how has your media-related degree led you to a more business marketing type of job, and 
What skills specific to radio, TV, film have you found invaluable in your current job? Well, when I was at, um, you know, the Fred Niles uh, communications firm and I then got exposed to that ad agency environment, <coughs> more particularly the media buying a role, and so I actually came up through, through, the, through, the, um, through the roots of being a media buyer and making the decisions on where uh, commercials for our clients, what radio shows were appropriate for them, what radio markets were appropriate for them, understanding how a television um, commercial is put together, uh, kind of understanding editing and what's appropriate. So that was, you know, that was great information, great learning that I learned here at UWO that helped me make the proper decisions for our clients. Uh, at the various agencies that I worked at. So it, it was really a great skill to have. From that point, you know, also understanding from a business perspective, from my client's perspective, what they are trying to accomplish for their various product or service, that was great. So I've, and I had this extra creative side, if you will, that um, put me a, a, maybe a little ahead above the uh, average media buyer when I first started out in the agency environment kind of went, you know, rose through those ranks. And then about 10 years ago, I made a shift to the client side. So now as a client side marketer, understanding also to production, because now I have responsibilities for supervising, if you will, or being the project manager of uh, television commercials too. So I understand the creative side in terms of what it will take to get a a television commercial or a radio commercial or a print ad produced, but then I also understand too from the business side what the client or what the goal is, who are we trying to talk to. And so pu coming, pulling all of that together has been beneficial. And that's why I said earlier, if I, I really uh, wish that I had to concentrate a little bit more on uh, uh, business classes, if you will, because that would have added. But I've learned that on the, you know, on, you know, on actually on the job, but most importantly, it was having the exposure of on the creative side, and that's what I learned here at UWO. That's been very, very, very effective for me. Okay. Dan, you mentioned almost having a, was it a minor in physical ed? Uh, was there anything that you wanted to do other than sports in college? No. Okay. Uh, from, from the time I was five, maybe, I wanted nothing but sports. I wanted to be a pro athlete. I collected 20,000 football, baseball, basketball cards. Okay. Read every sports book I could get my hands on. I'm still that way. Um, I need to diversify a little bit, maybe. Okay. But the, the, I really need to, and especially after listening to what Andy was saying about having a, a plan B. Um, right now, I am a dinosaur in my business. And as, as Terry mentioned, the reality is hitting for everybody. I am a middle-aged white male who makes the most in his department, which means I am the easiest to get rid of in my department. Um, everybody is, is looking to change in this business. When I started out in it, well, I shouldn't say when I started out. When I was younger, when we were growing up, you'd watch TV news, you'd see a male news anchor, a male meteorologist and maybe a puppet with him, and a male <laughs> sports coach. It was like the movie Anchorman, if, if you've seen that. That's a parody, but it was the reality. Mm -hmm. And then women finally were let in, like it was opening this door. Well, right now, if I'm a news director somewhere, I want to hire a female sportscaster. Because, uh, as, as the Milwaukee market has seen, we have a female sportscaster at three of the four stations. It's opened up a, a whole new era of viewers. More women are watching sports. They're seeing someone that they can actually see themselves being. Um, our station has a female general manager, news director. Three of the top four executives in the newsroom be, beyond that are females. We have our two main anchors are females. Half of our weather staff females, everything has changed in the business from what it was 25 years ago. And to have that, that other job in mind, like Andy just said, I'm starting to get, oh no, what am I gonna do? <laughs> and all of you really should take that to heart because what you think you're going to go into 
in the business that you really want to do, that job might not be there in 10 years because yeah. everything is changing so fast. The, the television news landscape, people are getting let go all over the place. It's, it's a bad business right now because car companies are having a tough time and they can't advertise. When they can't advertise, then everybody's feeling it. And you might have to take a job that you never thought you would. I might have to become a news reporter or a news anchor, not like that's becoming the devil, but I never thought about that when I was in school. That was not something I was interested in. And you really have to be able to diversify. I, luckily for me, I have a job at a radio station. Um, I'm a talk show host along with the TV. So at least I have that to fall back on. And it's really something that you should think about. Have an ability not only in what you want to do, even if you have known from age 16 that you wanted to do something in this business and you knew exactly what you wanted to do, and you graduate and you get that job, have something on the side just in case. Okay. And how has the internet impacted, um, it's had a huge impact on the media industry, but particularly in regards to sports and sports <coughs> anchors? How has your station adapted to that change? Well, um, we do have our own website, and it's, it's something where they expect us to write for it every day. And we have had to learn how to post video onto a website, which to some people sounds like, you know, using crayons, I suppose. For me, it's like brain surgery when I first started out. I could not grasp what that is. And everything, that, from what I, 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 I'll try that again. The, the gentleman that I co-host the talk show with, he works for a website on Milwaukee.com. He's a former writer for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. He got out of that business because he thinks the newspaper business is dying. It is in many places. And it's becoming web-driven. And it's been pointed out, well, if a newspaper dies, then who's going to run their website? a good point. But with television stations, with radio stations, everything is going towards web. So with sports, I think within the next few years we will see television stations that no longer have a sports department. It's web. Okay. So that's not good. Oh. Ed, so many students want to move to other states after graduation. What are some of the benefits of staying right here in Wisconsin? Well, you know, I, I grew up in the Fox Valley and I've been uh, uh, lucky enough to be able to, to work in the Fox Valley and nearby Green Bay. Um, yeah, family is very important to me and, and most of my family members live in, in the Fox Valley area so it's nice to, to, to be here. Um, I think it also helps too to, with your job and uh, being a reporter. Uh, if you grow up in the community you know everything about it. You know what the people are like, you know what they want, what their needs are. And uh, so it's easier to report and, and to, uh, to work on stories in that way. Um, one thing that I think that's changed in our industry is, is our viewers, our listeners are becoming uh, a greater part of what we do, especially with the internet and everything. Uh, you know, they want, to, they want to know things instantly and they want to be able to uh, you know, give their two cents you know, on what, a, what the subject is. So uh, we, we do know, ha we have to know what our viewership and our, our listeners are like. We have to, because uh, we're working for them, you know. Uh, we wouldn't be here without them. So, uh, um, yeah, that's key. Okay. Uh, do you have any quick advice for students? Do as much as you can. Learn as much as you can. This is your opportunity to, to, to learn about radio, TV, film. Um, get out there, get internships, they're very important, uh, contacts, uh, networking. Um, the more you do, the, the more you know, uh, the more marketable you will be. Okay. At this time, let's open the discussion to those of you who have any questions for our panel. Just raise your hands and someone will come to you with a microphone. Can you give any advice to us students interested in graduate school? Oh, certainly. Of course, your grades are going to be important, particularly those from your junior and senior year, as well as the GRE scores. But one of the things, when I went to graduate school, I was in a program that only had eight students in the master's class, and uh, the admissions committee looked at how well-rounded I was 
as a student, particularly with my involvement with Titan TV2 and WRST. So my advice is to just really stay active, be active, and take advantage of the opportunities presented to you because that makes you a stronger candidate. Going along with the whole um, graduate school uh, theme, a lot of students, I know I've been, people have been talking, if they can't get a job right away, going to graduate school just as another option to stay in school. Do you guys um, support that? Do you think it's not a good idea? Or do you think that we still need to um, search, um, you know, not kind of give up the, the job search and not kind of take graduate school as a last resort? That's a tough one. Um, my mom to this day keeps bugging me that I should go back to school. Um, I think the whole reason I didn't right away was because I was lucky enough to get a job. Um, and I never have been in a position where having that extra degree meant I got anything that went with it. Um, you know, now do I think about it some more? Yes, because I'm probably in that position where I now have a little bit of time that I could go back to school. But I think we've talked and, and compared it to teachers. When they have a higher degree, they are slotted in, you know, in, in a different pay scale, where for us as broadcasters, you just make what you make. An extra degree as far as being on the air or writing or anything like that doesn't, doesn't help. So I think it depends what you want to do and if that opportunity is there. You hate to say no to it, too. And especially if you're able to get funding for graduate school, that's, that's really key. And look at it as it's temporary. Most master's programs are about two years. And you know, it gives you a little more experience if the economy is still bad and you aren't able to get out into the industry. And it also gives you an opportunity to build more connections. Yeah. Any other questions? Over. Uh, I guess this question is uh, more for Dan or Terry. Um, with regards to TV journalism, as far as news broadcasting and whatnot, is there more of a premium placed on journalistic experience as far as like writing and interviewing? or like on camera, like TV experience? Well, you know what? <laughs> it, it depends on the market and it depends on the job. Um, ideally, everything is based on your journalistic ability, but this is television still. And sometimes someone will get a job based on looks or knowing someone or whatever. But the, the more experience, the more that you know, it, it, it's oftentimes easier to make them make a decision. Don't give them an easy decision. And, and anybody who's been through the hiring process, um, the last time I did, maybe six years ago, we had 220 people apply for one job. Some were right out of college. Some had experience at ESPN or CNN. Um, when, it, when you have that much to choose from, Certain things will stick out. And you can watch a tape of someone and you can tell that's a journalist, that's someone who's trying to be a journalist, that's an entertainer. And I think the safest thing for anyone hiring in the television news business is to hire someone who is a good journalist, who is not going to embarrass them or make them feel like they made the wrong choice. So the stronger you are in those basics is the best thing you can do. I think I would just add every market is different too. If you travel and you watch news in different places, you can tell it's very different just based on the people and the expectations. So even because you might be told, no, gosh, you're a great journalist, but we want someone flashy, don't take that as a hit because the next place you apply, they're going to be all over you about God, you're an amazing writer. You're going to come in here and you're going to make all our other writers have to step up to what you're doing. It does kind of take a little bit of that matching what's good for you and in your heart, too. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's time to wrap up. 
I'd like to thank you all for coming to the first annual Radio TV Film Industry Panel. <laughs>